Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if this is your first time visiting. This is going to be a walkthrough that has been requested of the journey Tarot by Tegan Michael Turner. <sighs> okay, this is definitely going to be a bit of an adventure together. We're just going to explore. I'm going to give some thoughts. We're going to go through card by card because this deck definitely is very different than a stereotypical tarot deck. It, it covers all the same structure, but this deck really goes its own way in a lot of places. So we're going to be exploring that together. This was a deck I showed in my March recent deck roundup, and it was really requested to do a full walkthrough of this particular deck. This one got the most requests. So I'm filming that for you all today. Let's dive into it. So I love this style box. I love boxes that open up all the way flat like this. And I thought this was so cool. We get this like art of sort of one side and the back side. So if you look, we have this woman who is floating on her back on the surface of the water. Kind of her legs are dangling beneath the surface. When we flip it around, we get the reverse of that image or what we might imagine is the reverse. So that's really cool. Um, I dig the, the sort of flipped perspective. That's really neat. So the back of the box is just part of this whole outer artwork that we see here. Again, very cool, very different. Let's get into it. So this creator, when I received this, this was a Kickstarter deck that I backed and I actually backed it in the middle of one of my hot takes uh, videos. But this creator um, really did something different here in the sense that they have, the guidebook is literally made up of little poems. So I'm probably going to refer to these occasionally. We'll see, especially if I just want another perspective on what the creator is trying to illustrate in the card. But they also sent with the Kickstarter this adorable little magnifying glass, which has been really handy and now lives on my tarot table because I love having just a convenient little, little um, magnifier to look at details in cards. So I have been digging this for sure. So we have this handy. Okay, so a couple things to tell you about the actual physical production quality of the deck. It's quite a thick cardstock. It feels like an uh, maybe like a 350 GSM art paper. I'm just, I don't remember from the campaign. I'm just telling you what it feels like. It is a kind of a glossy linen finish, which is with, with linen you really want, in my opinion, a bit of a, a sheen to the cards. It just helps with the shuffle and glide, but it is kind of a thick deck. This is what the backings look like. And there is some give to the cards, but it does, like I said, it does feel kind of thick. And if I hold the entire deck, I can't really make it bend much. So when I split it, let's just do a test. Yeah, it's pretty stiff, but you do get a good mix of the cards. I'm going to re-separate them though, so we can go through them. But yeah, cardstock is nice, but it is a little bit stiff or um, sturdy for what I prefer. I like a little bit bendier, but it's really nice. Feels high quality. So that's good kind of almost got like a waxy finish. That's kind of what it feels like, a little bit, just a touch on the waxy side. So it's not super, super crazy slidey. All right, let's zoom it in and take a tour. The guidebook is, look at there's a unicorn on the back. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, the guidebook is very simple. There's not a lot extra. We just jump right into the card meanings. And then in the back, there's some extra stuff. So so I'm just going to have this available. I might pull it out over to the side and like refer to it here and there as we go through the cards. So we begin with the fool. This has got a lot of free spirit, spirit energy to me. You can see there's actually over on the side here, like a little, like maybe basket or like little box of things. It's as if this character that's in this card was just sort of wandering around and like, it looks like they're like naked or nearly naked and they've decided to string a hammock over this river and lay in it, which there's an element here of risk taking, but also of just exploring freedom that I think really works well for the fool. Here we have the magician who looks like he's literally stepping from clouds into some sort of magical otherworldly like library. It's really different. Let's see what the poem, if the poem gives us any hints on this one. The one who seeks. The matrix of the mind, cosmic forces, mercury, and it says the magician, the pure consciousness seeking knowledge and experience. The seeker desires unspecific thoughts that drive the experience forward. The phrase is there are infinite possibilities to receive any of them. You must move forward. Um, really interesting. I almost get the vibe of somebody who's literally taking a little tour through the Akashic records or something. It's very different and I love it. There is a dreamlike quality to the artwork of this deck. It sort of takes you into an otherworldly place and I love the way that it 
goes its own direction. I've talked about this a lot lately, but decks like this sometimes are really great if you want to explore, if you want to step away from the comfort zone of traditional imagery, because it just invites you to look at the cards in a different way. And things like that are really great for expanding your views on the tarot, if you want to have them expanded. And not everybody does. A lot of people like that familiarity and the comfort zone, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this just offers something that I think is really interesting. This feels like, to me, a different take on the magician. Whereas this magician, it's not a different take on the magician, this is the high priestess, but I feel as if the magician is seeking the Akashic records, whereas I feel like the high priestess is already existing within the realm of the Akashic records in this image and is actually seeking to go deeper within, almost through this sort of cosmic mirror to take that information or that wisdom and sort of deeply dive inward to get more out of that experience. I don't know how to de de describe that, but that's what I'm kind of getting looking at this image. Here we have the Empress, and this is such a youthful, um, interesting energy. Um, I almost feel like she's about, she's got like a halo. Okay, let's just like look at this for a second. She's got a halo above her head, unless I'm misreading that symbol, but I don't think I am. And she's sort of glowing with light, and she's got this like sphere. And what is it that's in her other hand? It's like a book. So again, and she, there's some steps here. And okay, again, I feel like we're seeing this progression of energy here. So it's really interesting. He's sort of, the magician here is sort of seeking this records. The high priestess is sort of within the records and sort of diving deep within. But the empress feels as though she's taken a book. That's a book. When I zoomed in on the image, I'll show you. Uh, let's see if I can do this for the camera. That's a book in her hand there and like a sphere of something in her other hand. And she's looking out, we get this idea that she's way up high and this is sort of like the world or the earth. And it's like she's taken something from this and is about to cast it into the world. Does that make sense? So she's creating something from this higher energy. That's kind of what I get from this sort of progression. So I'm interested to see what the emperor is doing. And the emperor sits also holding a sphere. Oh wait, they're all holding spheres? Wait, the magician's holding a sphere there. The empress is holding one there. And here we have the emperor and his book is open and he is on the earth and he's holding a sphere. So we get to me, this is a very interesting progression to see in the sort of what I feel like are kind of like the uh, cosmic energies. We have sort of the idea of the divine masculine and feminine kind of, kind of vibe, but shown through different lenses. Like we have the, you know, the, the, what I feel like the magician and the higher, I'm, I'm talking and like, I'm getting excited. So I'm talking like, I'm not making sense, but let me see if I can make this make sense. These energies feel like they're very high up, um, really connected to my dog is like building a nest next to me. Oh my God, it's so distracting. Okay, I feel like they're connected to the highest part of spirit in a way, um, but they embody that differently. The Empress and the Emperor feel a little bit closer to the earth. And I really feel that. Look at this progression. It's very interesting to me seeing these four cards one after the other. That's really cool. Okay, and then we get to the Hierophant. And here we have, oh, this is really interesting. There's a lot of masking and puppeteering, a lot of putting on a show. My dog is having a great time next to me. She's like literally just like having the best time. Um, I'm interested what the poem for this, how the poem for this reads. Let's look at the Hierophant. The one who follows. Okay, we're going to come back. We're going we're gonna to read the little phrases at least, okay? So for the magician, it's the one who seeks... Let's go back to the fool. Screw it. <laughs> I just can't. I'm getting kind of excited. Okay. The one who chooses. Then we have the one who seeks with the cosmic force being Mercury. Um, and this is supposed to be the matrix of the mind. Then we have the priestess, the one who knows, the potentiator of the mind. Okay. Let's go back again. I cannot. This is so cool. Okay. So the, the yeah, this is just the one who chooses. Okay, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm just getting excited about what's in the guidebook. The magician is the one who seeks, and underneath that it says the matrix of the mind. And then the high priestess says the one who knows, the potentiator of the mind. And then we have the empress, the one who delivers, the catalyst of the mind. This is exactly how I was seeing it when I was looking at it. Oh my god, this is so cool. And then the emperor is the one with experience, the experience of the mind. Okay, and then we have the Hierophant. This is labeled the one who follows the significator of the mind. 
Okay, okay, okay. And then it says the Hierophant, the per persona of the self, conscious mind. The seeker understands the interaction between self and other. The phrase is each experience a difference along the path. So traditions, um, societal approval or social approval and admonishment. Okay, then we have the lovers, which is the one in love, the transformation of the mind. So we're really looking at high level concepts here. I like this because we see a couple different concepts. We have these two down here, which seem like they're like looking into one another's eyes. We have these two that are embracing one another. And behind that, we have literally what looks like a brain. This is fascinating stuff. Then we have seven. Now this is typically the chariot. And here it says the great way. This is the great way of the mind. And it says the one with direction. So here we're thinking about direction, direction, direction. So here we have in the lovers, we have obviously love and choice, and then we have direction with the, with the chariot. Wow. Then we have for strength, we have, oh, okay, this is just, this is gonna be justice. So we're gonna see the strength energy. Fascinating, okay, so we have really justice or the equivalent to justice in position eight, and we have strength or the equivalent to strength in position number 11. So let's look at it that way. So we have equilibrium for justice. This is really beautiful. I get strong Isis vibes from this card for sure. We have the heart and the feather. So that's also a Mott reference. Then we have the sage. This is so great for the hermit. I love this. And I'm just curious what the association here is. The one with wisdom, the potentiator of the body. So we've moved from the mind. Oh, wait, hold on. So mind is cards one through seven. So we're going to work with septenaries here, which is very interesting. So we finish with card number seven, the great way, which is the great way of the mind or the one with direction. And then we go into the body. So now we have the one in homeostasis, the matrix of the body with justice. We have sage, the sage, who is, this is the equivalent of the hermit card. And we have the one with wisdom, the potentiator of the body. Are these going to follow the same they are. Okay, 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 okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom out because I I am finally realizing what's going on here. Okay, so we're going to put the fool up top, just out of the way for a moment. So we have, let's go, let's go back through this as I lay these out because there is definitely an intentional system going on here. So we have the matrix of the mind. We have the catalyst of the mind with the high priestess. Nope, I said that wrong. The high priestess is the the potentiator of the mind. We have the, the empress as the catalyst of the mind. This is so cool. Uh, then we have the emperor as the experience of the mind. The hierophant as the significator of the mind. So this is the one who follows. Then we have the lovers as the transformation of the mind. Oh my God, I'm so fascinated. Hold on. I'm having, I mean, can you tell? I'm like really experiencing something here. Okay. This is definitely not a deck that I feel like you need that that is 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 just fluffy, right? Okay. And then we have the great way, which is this is equivalent of the chariot. So this is the great way of the mind. Now, here's what's interesting about this. The tarot major arcana is made up of septenaries, three sets of seven cards, right? One through seven. 8 through 14, can I math? And then 15 through 21, with the fool being outside of that septenary, uh, outside of these septenaries. Does that make sense? So a septenary is a group of seven. So then we do, so this is the mind septenary, according to Tegan. So let's take a look now at card number eight, which is the matrix of the body, just as the magician was the matrix of the mind. And so now we have, for 10, we have the Wheel of Fortune card. So this is considered the matrix of the body, and it says... Nope, I got this wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. My cards are out of order. Try again. <laughs> the equilibrium. Justice is the matrix of the body, and it says the one in homeostasis. The equilibrium is the name of the justice card, which is really interesting. So we're just going to bring this up. I'm just going to stack them a bit so we can just kind of follow along because it's following the same sort of keywords. Then we have the hermit, which in this deck is called the sage, and this is the one with wisdom or the potentiator of the body. So we have the matrix of the body, I might have said mind, I'm sorry. The matrix of the mind, the matrix of the body. Then we have 
the potentiator of the mind and the high priestess and the potentiator of the body and the hermit, which is really fascinating. And then we have the catalyst of the body as the, or excuse me, the catalyst of the mind as the empress, but the catalyst of the body as the fortune. So this is like the wheel of fortune card. This is really cool. We can definitely see this, right? We see the person sitting on top having all the fortune and the one below who's sort of like getting just the cast offs from this person up here. So sometimes you're on the bottom, sometimes you're on the top. Really cool. So that is fortune, the one with luck and it's the catalyst of the body. Then we have the experience of the mind and the emperor. Now we have the experience of the body in the passion. So this is instead of the, the, the strength card, this feels a lot like more like the Thoth tarot in the way that this is, would be the lust card. We have the passion. And the passion says that it is called the vulnerable one, which is so interesting. And here's what it says. The passion is within the body, the container for the mind. The seeker uses passion as endless energy and willpower. And the phrase is want to use the natural powers of passion, want to master the strength. Really interesting. And then we have the hanged man as the significator of the body. So the Hierophant was the significator of the mind. Now we have the hanged man as the significator of the body. And this one says the one who waits. The hanging man is the experience of the immobile vehicle. The seeker's best action is proactive retrospection. Phrase, if you jump in, you will drown in the tumultuous waters. Wow, 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 wow. Again, we have this very unique take on the tarot, right? We have the vulnerability and power in the passion card. We have a really great depiction here of what the Wheel of Fortune can kind of look like, right? The, you can see our more traditional associations of the tarot here. We're also getting to explore the septenaries, which is really interesting. And I don't think that's been done that I can remember in any other decks in my collection. Next we have death. This is going to be the transformation of the body. So the lovers is considered the transformation of the mind and the lovers is a very transformative stage in the first septenary. Now we have the transformation of the body with death, which is literally perfection, right? We of course have the major stage of transformation in the second septenary happens in the death card. That makes perfect sense. And then this basically says the one who transforms the phrase is, I know I am meant to be wherever I go. And then in card 14, which is the last card, we should now have the great way of the body as the alchemist. So the alchemist is our, I don't think I brought these cards up to show you. I'm so sorry. I'm getting wrapped up in the story of this deck. But here is the death card, really powerful with the moths there. And then here is the alchemist. So we're seeing somebody sort of dancing in the space between energies uh, in, the middle, in the middle place, right? So this is our temperance card, but it's called, renamed the alchemist. And that is the great way of the body, which makes a lot of sense. So now we're going to move into the third septenary and it's not going to disappoint. We are now moving into spirit. So we have mind, body, and the third septenary is representing spirit. So now we have the pans. This is going to be instead of the devil. And it says the one who perceives, the one who perceives. Huh. The seeker has a tendency of taking the experience too seriously. And the phrase is fear can be transformed. This is really, I think, about the inner wild and like really stepping into that place of abandon. Interesting. But we still have the sense of trap, trappedness, trappedness. <laughs> what is the word? How do I say that? Um, happening underneath there. So lots to chew on. So that's going to be the matrix of the spirit. This was the matrix of the mind, the matrix of the body, the matrix of the spirit. Oh, I love this so much. Okay, so the tower then becomes the potentiator of the spirit, and it is called the One Awakening in this deck. Well, I mean, it's called the Tower on the card, but in the book, it's the One Awakening, and it is the potentiator of the spirit. We have all of our classic sort of destruction happening in the tower. Then we have, for card 17, which is the star, the one who believes the catalyst of the spirit is faith and belief, and that makes so much sense to me. When I think about this, if the catalyst of the mind is the empress, right, that ability to sort of create into life, to bring things into being, right, through, through the mind, and if the catalyst of the body is the wheel of fortune, the idea that the catalyst is success or is that feeling of like, of, of hitting a point where we feel like we understand our place on the wheel. And if the catalyst for the spirit is faith, that just, that just makes sense to me. So this is the one who believes. Card 18 is the moon, the fanatic one. Interesting. And this is the experience of the spirit. To sort of lose ourselves in the journey in a way. To sort of like allow ourselves to be lost. That's what I feel here. And the star, I don't know if I held this up. <laughs> This is really giving a lot of Thoth energy to me. Um, maybe, I don't know. I would be curious to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments. Do you see Thoth here? 
Um, so the moon as the experience of the spirit, again, makes sense. I really feel the experience of the spirit in this card. So that makes sense. And then of course the sun then would be the significator of the spirit. The one that emanates. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my God, I love judgment so much. Okay, then judgment card, we have the liberation, the unjudgmental one. <clears throat> and this is the transformation of the spirit. These are all transformative cards. It's really cool. This really gives you an invitation to sort of look at the septenaries, to really look at the layers of the cards and how they parallel. When you really look at the fourth card of every septenary and you see the sort of alignment, when you look at the fifth card of every septenary and you see the alignment, and this deck really helps you do that, which I was not, I had no idea about this. I discovered this literally while filming this video. So these are the kinds of reasons why it's sometimes fun to just get into a deck and really look at it and really sit with it. Okay, the world then becomes the universe, the one with one, and this is the great way of the spirit. The great way of the spirit. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And this literally looks like you can see the layers of the self, mind, body, and spirit sort of overlapped one over the other. I don't know, that's what I'm seeing. I'd be curious what you see in this image. But that's what I see. The seeker is at one with the concept of self and of intelligent infinity. Phrase, the exploration of self is ever expansive. <sighs> well, I was not expecting that. And now I have no idea what to expect from this deck as a whole. But the septenary alignment here is really cool through the Major Arcana. This is very unique. Um, it's a really intelligent take on the tarot. And this kind of shit just really just gets me going. I love this stuff. So let me pick up the Majors. And we're going to take a look at the miners. I have no idea what to expect, um, but I'm loving the images. If I take them at face value too, the, again, the dreamlike quality of these images. Let's just take a moment. Magician. Yeah, I love this. I feel like there's so much to intuitively riff on in these cards. If we're not looking at, it, at them as a whole, but looking at them card by card, everything I need to work with this deck intuitively is definitely there in the imagery. I'm seeing the Rider Waite Smith meaning. I'm, I'm, if I look for it, I can definitely see the thought in here as well. The moon is very otherworldly. We're, we're missing people's selves in here, but this is the realm of spirit, so that suddenly makes sense to me. Um, I love this liberation card so much, and the the universe card. The universe, not the world. Okay, so let's set these aside and let's take a look now. I'm gonna zoom us maybe back in. Let me just take a look. Let me cheat. I'm gonna peek ahead in the book. The suits are renamed to their elements. I did this in my own deck. I really like the energy being associated with the element. That really works for me. So through the Minor Arcana, if I remember correctly, we're going to get through most of the numbered cards, little poems, um, little rhyming messages. And I'm not looking at this as, is this good or bad poetry? I could I could care less. What I care about is do the little poems or do them? Do they give me something to think about, to chew on? Um, the Ace does not have that though. The Ace of Fire is called Energy. And it just says pure creative force, momentum of upward flame, will, courage, will, courage, and fun. And we just have a very fiery colored scene here, but I'm not necessarily seeing the idea of energy necessarily in this image. So I don't know. What are your thoughts? I see what looks like pyramids back here, though, which is really interesting and makes me wonder if there's a reference there that I might be missing. But that is the Ace of Fire. Next, we have the Two of Fire, and this one says its, key, its main keyword listed here is agency. I love that word. So it's really interesting because we have what looks like two figures here and here. But it's one of those optical illusion situations because we also have feet. And if you follow those feet up, you see that there's actually a figure here in the foreground, which is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Somebody came up with all of this, for like from their brain. It's amazing to me. So this one says Mar Mars and Aries. So we do have the ast astrology. And by the way, that is referenced through the majors as well. You get um, the zodiac sign or the planet and it all lines up the way that it's like quote unquote supposed to if you're familiar with the traditional associations. Um, so we also get the decans referenced through the minors. So here we have Mars and Aries for the two of fire agency. And here's an example of one of the poems. So it says, the past is my history, myself as a memory, the future, my mystery, perhaps for a century, recall all discoveries for an honest trajectory. Um, and this is really cool because it makes me stop and think and go, okay, what is it telling me? And really what the two of fire is about in this card 
is about recognizing that your past informs your present, but it also informs your plans for your future and that you can like engage with that in a, in a tangible way. The three, there's also three little sub keywords at the bottom of, of every card entry. Yeah, every card entry has three additional keywords at the bottom. Here it's will, determination, and initiative, which I really like for this card. Then we have the three of fire. Now I like thinking of this card as like a card of embarking. Now here the keyword is culture, which is very interesting. And then the sub keywords are virtue, gatherings, and travel. So I'm not gonna read the poem for everyone, but this idea, the sensation of movement here does work for the way that I view the three of wands. The four of fire, I like to see a sense of some stability and like a pause in the journey, a pause to sort of celebrate and recognize our progress, that sort of thing. And here we have sanctuary, Venus and Aries. This is a very interesting fire, excuse me, this is a very interesting five of fire, and we have strife, Venus and Leo. Fundamentally, I disagree to anything that you decree. Whatever you say, it isn't for me. Only in my beliefs can we be free. It's kind of like this idea of my way is the, high, my way is the right way, my way or the highway, and you can see each person is standing on the other person's shoulders, but the person, hello, there we go, the person at the bottom isn't better off for that, and neither is the person at the top. Like they would get so much further if they worked together than one trying to just stand on the other. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's what's kind of trying to be illustrated there. Then we have the six of fire, which is victory. And we get like almost like a birthday party vibe. Like there's balloons leading us to a celebration. That's cool. Then we have the seven of fire. We have valiance here. Interesting. I want my little magnifying glass again because I'm curious what is happening. What is going on there? So it says, my truth, my truth is mine and mine alone, a thing that only I have known. I'll, de I'll defend it with every breath, with every step until my death. I break, excuse me, I speak my truth loud and clear. Everything I've said is sincere. Perseverance, beliefs, and bravery. So it's kind of like, again, it's it's standing on what you perceive to be the high ground. There's a moral high ground element here, but there's also this idea of valiance. It's like, yes, they're standing up for your truth, which is great, but there can also be like ego here and there can also be overconfidence in your own beliefs as well. So interesting, interesting. Okay, so then we have the six of fire. Excuse me, the eight of fire. Very different take. I usually see the eight of fire as like a momentum card. And here we have swiftness, moon in Sagittarius. I dig this deck. It's just very like, it's very different. Here we have the nine of fire resilience. So much further to go. There's a sense of being tired here for sure. And then the 10 of fire, interesting. So I typically see this, okay, so here it says encumbered. That hits so different now that I've been playing video games a lot. <laughs> a video game a lot because when you're encumbered you can't move very quickly you've got too much going on here somebody's encumbered by their own what they've built they have too much or they're too embedded in their life it's like there's a there's a heavy feeling an oppressive feeling to all of this I mean granted I wouldn't mind living there like those are some awesome bookshelves and stuff but like there's a chandelier there's a there's a telescope there's a grand piano it's almost like just too much of everything just leads to this buildup Okay, now we're into the courts. Okay, so they are renamed. Oh, hold on. Okay, they're pretty intuitive. So let's just take a look. They're in kind of a weird order. So we have the Acolyte of Fire. The Acolyte I'm gonna see as the, um, as the page. Acolyte really works for that energy and we have playfulness. Literally looks like he's in a workshop experimenting, so that totally works for me. <laughs> um, the King of Fire feels out of order to me. So let's just put these in the order that I'm familiar with like so. So then we have the Knight of Fire, who is literally like, what do you call it? Spelunking? He's like attached to a cable. He's jumping. He's maybe bungee jumping. There's really a freedom of movement here that I love. Then we have the Queen of Fire, who literally looks like a flame. Look at this. She's a flame from the campfire. That is so cool. What does it say about her? So it's got her as water of fire, air of fire, earth of fire. So the knights are air. Okay, 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 okay. And then the kings are fire of fire in this deck. So, but the queen looks like fire of fire, doesn't she? Like that whole campfire vibe. Confidence is her keyword. Oh, I didn't say what the, what the knights, the um, knights keyword was the adventurer. Yeah, okay, and then queen of fire is confidence. That's a word I use for her a lot. Uh, and then we have the king of fire as presence. I love presence for him and he is very king of fire energy. 
I really like this. This is super unique. Okay, let's take a look at the water suit. I just can't shut up. Um, okay, so we have sort of the pure energy of the suit. So I kind of want to compare the Ace of Fire. Okay, so they don't all have like fire in them, but a lot of them do. But this is so green and earthy and calm compared to the rest. Everything else has a lot of these oranges in it. Not all of them though. Okay, sorry, I'm just being kind of distracted. This also has like an orange border that goes all the way around the card and I think that's the only one that does that. I think so, let's see if the other kings do that. Anyways, okay, so now we have the Ace of Water. And this is like a pond, we're at kind of like these like steps before the pond. Is this somebody like walking in the water? It looks like that, that might be a figure. Hopefully we're not blurry, I think we might be a little blurry. There we go, walking in the water right here. Let's just see. So this just says emotion, feeling by sensing emotional fulfillment from my gut and yours, intimacy, empathy, and contentment. Okay. This two of water is interesting because we see a figure by herself. And typically in the two of water, we'll see two figures. So this says vividity. Okay. Somebody's going to, I need, I need to know. Vividity. Okay. Let's just read what it says because I have no idea what that means. What is something that can be shared, had alone, or in a pair? A thing only gained if one dare. It is precious, but not always rare. When one cares, love is there. Aww. It's a really different take on the Two of Water or the Two of Cups, right? We're not showing love for another, but love in general. Love as a concept. Interesting. This three of water feels very, um, it's got the vibes of what I would expect to see in a three of water. And the word here is community, which works really well. Then we have the four of water. I love the stagnation and the colors in this. Again, it brings me back a little bit to the Thoth tarot, that sort of murky, muddy feeling. And the keyword here is lethargy, which I think is a good keyword for the four of water. Then we have the five of water where we have self-pity instead of grief. Interesting twist. I like it. This also has, feels like it has some nods back to Thoth. I cannot wait to hear some of your thoughts. If you know Thoth really well, I feel like I'm really feeling it and seeing it in these cards. Okay, now we have the six of water. You know what card will tell us? I just realized seeing the six. You know what card will really tell us if there's Thoth vibes is the six of swords. Or maybe it's the seven of swords. We'll keep an eye out for those. There's a couple swords cards where I feel like it really strays, uh, the Thoth really strays away from what we're used to seeing. I'd be curious what the take. Anyways. We're in the six of water now, not in the six of air, so I need to focus. Here we have sentimentality, which is a great keyword. Oops. Um, but this feels a lot like sort of like fantasy, like childhood fantasy, like pirate ships flowing through the air and like, I don't know. Yeah. It's definitely got some Peter Pan type vibes, storybook vibes, fairy tale vibes. Yep. Then we have the seven of water, indecision, which is a good keyword for this card. There's so many options, right? So many different realms everywhere. So many things. It's almost like... What path, all these different pathways going off in all these different directions. Oh, this is going to be such a cool deck to read intuitively. The Eight of Water is Reverie. Living within reverie, envision escaping everything. The dream is nigh, deception is mine. This is the sign, nearly cloud nine, and now I've crossed the line. Wow. Everything that's established here, but she's going that direction instead. Oh, I love this nine of water. Okay, I totally already peeked at this, but I love the bathtub vibes. I love the self-care vibes. Here's what it says, indulgence. And I struggle with that person, that keyword actually for myself. I struggle with it because indulgence is something I tend to think of as a more material concept, but it's not shown as a material concept necessarily. You could look at this and see opulence and luxury, but I see instead the indulgence of sort of spending time for yourself with yourself um, in this bubble bath with the flowers floating in it. Wait a minute, is that a bubble bath? Because I totally viewed it as a bubble bath, but now I'm looking at it, is that a scale? Are we measuring something? Like, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm gonna choose to see it as a bubble bath. It must be, right? That's a bubble bath. This art style definitely, it isn't always clear to me what I'm looking at, but I'm okay with it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, it reminds me of the Lucid Dreams Tarot, which I mentioned, but I couldn't remember the name of the deck when I was in the um, recent deck roundup. 
So here's the 10 of water and it says bliss, which is one of my favorite keywords ever for the 10 of water. I think it's a really good one. Um, I love that we have this sort of like beautiful environment where everything is gorgeous and picturesque. And it looks like almost to me, what I'm seeing over here is either a portal or a mirror. And I'm going to choose to see it. I think probably as a portal most of the time. So now we have the Acolyte of Water. This is going to be the page and we have Insightful, which is a really great keyword for the Page of Water. I'm totally getting like Little Mermaid vibes, Underwater Atlantis vibes. It's really cool. Then we have the Knight and the Knight of Water is labeled the Romantic, which totally works for me. And here we have what looks like an Earth Elemental um, loving up on an Air Elemental. <laughs> and I think that's so cool. Love this card. The Knight of Water, the Romantic. Yes. Here we have the queen of water and her keyword is empathy, which works. And then we have the king of water and his is compassion. Again, really works. Love him. He almost looks a little bit swordsy to me, but he works. He works. That brings us to air. That brings us to air. So now we have the Ace of Air, which is going to be, in, oh, it's inspiration. Oh, I was not expecting that. That's a keyword I usually use for fire. So that just threw me like crazy. But it does say, shrouded in the mist, an idea in the midst, capture or be missed. Okay. The idea of don't let the idea pass you by. Okay, okay, okay. I can get with it. Two of Air, juxtapose. That's a cool word. That's a cool, cool keyword for this card. Dichotomy, dilemmas, and nuance. Yes. Oh, so good. Three of air. I showed this to somebody. Was it Danny? I'm trying to remember now who I showed this to. And they were like, is that, or maybe it was Dawn. One of them. I was showing it to one of them. Um, the house is upside down. So if you look a little closer, if the camera would, hello, will the camera focus? Let's bring it in. I believe in you, camera. You can do it. I'm not that close to you. Chill out. Okay. I guess we have to be here. Anyway, you can see that the house is upside down, which is weird, right? An upside down tree house for the three of air. What the heck is that about? Very different take on the three of air. But the keyword written here is sorrow. I'm like, um, okay. But then listen, the sky is bigger than it seems. One side is crumpled self-esteem. On the other, a sun that brightly beams. Opposites that are much too extreme. Sorrow because it never existed. Out of mind where it got twisted. Somewhere, but I must have missed it. Heartbreak because it has persisted. I love that so much. There's this feeling of like your world's been turned upside down because of an experience you've had and you have to like go through the process of understanding what you need to learn from it because it all got twisted up. So cool. Okay, here we have the four of air and we have manifest. Unexpected for the Four of Air. That's not a keyword I would typically associate with this card. Keywords are meditation, reflection, and projection. Let go of the past. Visualize the future. What you want to last. Believe with all your might. What you want to be in sight. Manifest with all your power. You may see it the, this very hour. It's interesting. So it speaks more to using that time to step away, to get clarity, to create the future you want to live, which is a valid use of the Four of Air's respite, right? So I can make a case for this. It's just a little bit different and it's taking me in new directions and that's exciting to me. The Five of Air, discipline. Ooh, I like that keyword for this. Do not let defeat bring you low. With discipline, you have the ability to grow. You'll come out stronger and more complete with true victory as your ultimate feat. There's more to the poem. I don't want to read every poem because it's not fair to the creator, but just like, oh, it's so good. Okay, so then we have the six of air. I love this vibe, okay? I love it. It's taking us in a direction. We could get that feeling of escape. There's like sort of a vacation vibe here, which also works. Um, what's the keyword for this one? Delve. Interesting keyword, delve. Then we have seven of air and we have undermine. Now this definitely feels like the Thoth. Let me read it. And again, if you know, if you know Thoth, um, again, let me know your thoughts. I don't think I'm making that up. Okay, so this says, whispering lies plants the seeds. Excuse me, whispering lies plants the seed of fear and doubt to hinder and impede, undermining those they claim to please, cheating us with incredible ease. Cheat, cunning, and manipulation. So there's the idea of cheating, right? We have the um, we have this like road that's leading to something that looks exciting, but if you look closer when you get there, okay, this is really cool. Okay, let's see if I can get this. I want to show you because this is really neat. 
it looks like from a distance you're going to this like castle in the stone and you're going to be able to walk into this like area right here but when you look at it a little closer oh gosh can i do this without reflection it's just a stone wall right it looked like a doorway but you see figures hitting it and it looks like i mean maybe there's a doorway in there there is a doorway with little stairs going up okay so now i'm confused so where's the deception in this card Over here, there looks like there's a broken, there's some scaffolding and maybe like a broken connection to here. What's happening down here? There's more broken, yeah, all of this is like more broken, um, I don't know if I can show you in the camera, but there's more broken scaffolding considering these cool little details in the card it's really cool that tegan included a little magnifying glass so you can actually get in here and start looking at things but yeah there is a doorway and if you look closely that doorway has little stairs leading up into the mountain i'm so intrigued by this i'm so intrigued by this okay I'm just getting lost in the deck, which is always a good sign to me. Here we have the Eight of Air. Now, this is usually a card I feel like I'm being bound, but here she's actually floating. Interference. Ascending through the twilight sky, feel the clouds as they pass you by. Release two balloons all too soon. Still you fly with plans awry. Oh, okay, so to me, this feels a little bit like, so the keywords are obscured, trapped, and disoriented, and the keyword was interference. Almost like overthinking maybe when you don't need to like you can you can get where you need to get but you don't need to overthink it doesn't have to be perfect maybe i don't know i don't know what do you think i just love the way this is really different really really different okay this nine of air feels pretty stereotypical i love bats i did bats in my nine of air i love that that's that makes me happy uh, we have fatigue here trepidation obsession and insomnia and then in the 10 of air, we have Disillusion, which is such a great card. We see this sort of like house kind of being kind of crumbling and falling apart in this like nature. This, these vines are sort of reclaiming it a bit. That's kind of what I get from that. Now we have the court cards. So we have the Acolyte of air. This is the Page of air. And the keyword here is Innovation. The Knight of air. Oh, that's a cool looking Pegasus is the Ambitious. Neat. Again, a very dreamlike quality to this deck. The queen of air is communication, which is a great keyword for her. Love that. Love that. And then the king of air is communication. Wait, 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 wait. Not communication again. There we go. Rationality. Love that keyword for him. Absolutely love it. Then we are into the earthly suit and we have purpose as the ace. So we had inspiration for fire. Excuse me. We had inspiration for air. We had emotion for water and we had energy for fire. So that does work. So we have purpose for earth. Yes, that works. Wow. I think it's kind of showing us like the land we're going to be in. Yeah, you definitely, there's like a quality to the, to the world you're going to be exploring right in each ace the two we have exchange the two of earth as exchange is really interesting it takes us in the direction almost like the um six of pentacles so it'd be interesting to see what they do with that card Ooh, that's very like ancient pyramids and like but hidden technology that's so cool collaboration goals teamwork and growth building something and then the four of earth here is power. Interesting keyword for the four of earth. But again, I feel like that's the, is that the Thoth keyword? Oh, y'all. Okay, anyways. Uh, hoarding, selfishness, and ruthless. So this person. Has climbed down this. Interesting. It's like. It's almost like this person fell into this hole and they had them tie this rope to their neck so they could climb down and get the coins that they found, like sort of taking advantage of them to get more of whatever they wanted. I could be just totally reading into that, but that's kind of the story I see in this card. But it's it's interesting, these images, because they really do invite you. This would be such a great deck for people who want to use tarot as prompts for like creative writing. Again, I just feel like there's a lot you could riff off of on these. They feel very much almost like the... um. 
the unlabeled cards from that Dixit game. They feel a little bit almost like that, like just interesting things happening and you could kind of like really dive into it. Okay, next we have the Five of Earth. Really feeling like the loss and the disconnection here and the word is, is worry. Look at this sad tree. The Six of Earth, we have charity. So we're still doing that. So we had exchange for the two, but in the six, we have charity. So more classic interpretation. Interesting. This character here is hauling this bag of rocks. Interesting. Again, I feel like you could tell a whole story. Seven of Earth is interesting. What's the keyword here? Fortitude. Interesting. Forward we must go, forward we must go, fast or slow, for it's what we know. Forward we must go, see the glow, and move with gusto. Forward we must go. Like, okay, taking them at face value, I don't love the like rhythm and the feeling of the poems, but they do give me something to think about. Which I mean, that's the point, right? That's the point. Okay. The eight of earth, we have prudence. Interesting. You get the feeling of just kind of hanging back, not necessarily taking immediate action. In forward movement, seeking further improvement, advancing to her destination, never stuck in contemplation, humble in her calculation, easy with a solid foundation. Huh. There's definitely ease in the posture of this character. Wow. I don't know. I, like, I feel like this is something I really, it's not something you can do quickly. I feel like with this deck, you really have to sit with it. The nine of earth, which I usually see as some kind of like luxury or, or yeah, luxury is the keyword here. Perfect. I don't know why I put all the cards over here. Oh, well, I did. So let's just bring them over. Okay. For 10 of earth, we have wealth, but this wealth is natural wealth not material wealth, which is great. I love to see it. All right, so we have the page of earth. She's cool. Prosperity, interesting keyword. So it's like, are the acolytes in general concepts like this? Now I'm so curious, because let's, let's just go back for a second. So the acolyte of fire was creativity. Was it not? Was it not? Let's just double check. Yeah, the accolade of fire. No, playfulness. Okay, so playfulness for the act of uh, for the for the accolade of fire. Uh, romantic. Nope, that was the night. Insightful for the accolade of water. So those are personality traits. The accolade of air, though, was innovation. So if I go back. innovation. Okay, okay, okay. And then the acolyte of earth is prosperity. Also, I just noticed, so I can just confirm this real quick. Well, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that when we get to the, um, am I losing track of things here? Okay, ace of fire, acolyte of fire. Okay, so let's get these out of the way again. Okay, so here we have the acolyte of earth who is prosperity in this case. The knight of earth is riding a tortoise, which I freaking love because I often refer to this as sort of like tortoise versus hare. You can be the tortoise and it's okay. And here we have the shrewd, which is an interesting keyword. There are font changes throughout the guidebook. Like here the font is super tiny. I don't know if you can see that. But like just a page, few pages back, it's much bigger. Like I don't love that, to be honest. I'd rather it be consistent, but it's readable. It's just, it's just quite small. So anyways, the queen of earth, that was the knight of earth, the shrewd. The queen of earth is health, which is a great keyword. And then the king of earth is stability, which really, really works for me. Okay, before I go into the cards that come after this, I want to quickly point out that all the king cards do have borders in a really cool way. So let me just show that to you really quick. So you can see the border here is like this brown with the little lines on it, like the little squigglies on it. Um, it's sort of decorative. But the king of air has this blue border like that. The king of water has this sort of like, you have to look for it, but it's like this murky green border that goes around the card. And none of the other cards have that. And then the king of fire, if you recall, had 
this orange border. So all the kings do have that border, so there's consistency throughout the deck, which is great. All right, next we have a little pendulum board. This is such a cool thing to include in a deck. I've never seen this before, but it's actually the kind that works the way that I read with the pendulum. So let me just pull mine out and I'll show you what I mean. So here's my little pendulum, pendulum box. So, oh no, that's not my pendulum box. I lied. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong box. That's my circle stones. Okay. Here's where I keep my pendulums. Um, so let's just grab this one. This is my smoky quartz that says, speak your truth. This is so cool, actually. I'm probably gonna take it out of the deck and literally keep it with my pendulums. Um, but this is kind of a great way to work with a pendulum. So let me just center it in the center. Okay, show me yes. It's hard to do this on camera. Oh, it's showing me no. It's like, no, I don't wanna. <laughs> All right, I was also moving though. Um, but this is the way I, this is the kind of pendulum board I would like because you basically got maybe, or you've got ask again, maybe if we swing this way, no if we swing this way, and yes if we swing this way, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I think that's a, a really cool basic little way to work with a pendulum. Um, to be fair, typically how I work, typically for me, yeses are clockwise and noes are counterclockwise with all of my pendulums. But I think that's just such a cool, innovative little thing to toss into a deck. I just think that's really neat. Um, and so it does actually address these in the guidebook. Let's just see what it says. So it says, um, using a pendulum is a simple and effective way to access your intuition and gain insights into your subconscious mind. A pendulum is a weight and it describes what that is. Cool, cool, cool. And then it says it begins to swing back and forth through a circular motion. To use a pendulum, start by finding a quiet and comfortable place. Um, and then it basically says, okay, um, you can then ask the pendulum yes or no questions or ask it to indicate a specific direction or answer to a question. So in this case, you've also got the elements represented. So you have earth water, air, and fire, although the colors are kind of strange, but you do have the elements represented here. So you could work with the elements with the pendulum, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I think I'll pull this out of the deck because why not? I don't, I'm not gonna shuffle it in, so I might as well keep it with my pendulums. And then this card is a meditation color breathing card, which, listen to this. So I'm not gonna read the entire thing because again, not fair to the creator, but it has a, a five-step breathing process that has you working your way up. And these are, in my view, the chakras. Does it actually reference them as the chakras? No. But it has you use this as a visual for representing um, this breathing exercise. It takes about 10 minutes to do. It's called color breathing. It says color breathing is a meditative practice that involves transforming the mind's associations with colors, release any blockages and open the mind's eye. Um, really cool. And then you've got some note pages in the back of the guidebook. So I don't know what to do about this card. I think these cards I'm just going to pull out of the deck and just pop them into my little desk drawer here and they can literally live here with my pendulums. Works for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let me get the magnifying glass out of the way. Let's zoom out. Let's just do a little shuffle because I haven't shuffled this deck yet. Did I? My candle's out of the way. All right, so let's just give her a shuffle. This is a really neat deck. There's a lot of thought that clearly went into this. There's a strong system. If you want a deck to use along with, say, a deck and walk or something like that, this does have the deckens noted in the guidebook, so that's very convenient. Um, but also, it's got really unique takes on the cards which I think is really cool. So from just a reading perspective, decks like this excite me because they, they get me out of my comfort zone. They get me thinking about the cards in a different way. And I love that. So let me just do some hand over hand. And let's just do a little energy obstacle advice and just see how it feels to actually lay them out for a reading. All right. All right, so energy, we have the Knight of Air. Obstacle, the Seven of Water. This was indecision, was it not? 
let's just, we're going to double check this. And then the advice is the tower. Okay, so let's just take a look at this and see if with the guidebook, how it feels. So we have the Knight of Air, the Ambitious, it's the energy, ambition, um, chasing after something. We have the Glass Pegasus teaches us that anything is possible with goals that are ambitious and a heart that is unstoppable. Whoa, cool. Okay, so then the obstacle, if the heart's going to be unstoppable, we got to get whatever that obstacle is out of the way. So the seven of water is indecision. So we need to move past indecision. If we're going to be ambitious, we have to get indecision out of the way. So the advice for that is the tower, which to me, I would, I would read that as <clears throat> if we're trying to break past indecision and we're being ambitious, the tower to me is like, let your preconceived ideas, <clears throat> oh my gosh, my throat is going, let your preconceived ideas about whatever it is you're trying to do, let that come crumbling down. Like start with a clean slate. That's how I would probably view that. But let's see what it says. So for the tower, the one awakening, the tower is ethos struck by the purest form of energy. The seeker sees a flash of what is beyond. It destroys all prior fundamental beliefs. Phrase, to move forward, you must be willing to start over. That's literally what I just freaking said. That's amazing. I love that. Um, revelation, upheaval, and new paradigm. Yeah, I'm sold. Um, this is really cool. This is going to be really fun to read with. I'm excited about this deck. I think it's, it's again, very innovative, very different love how far off the beaten path it goes, but in a way that makes sense. Sometimes I get decks that go off the beaten path, but it's really hard for me to conceptualize what it is it's trying to tell me. And this deck is not like that. It has a lot of really different takes on the cards, but they make me think in new ways and they make sense. They don't feel like they're being different just to be different. Rather, they're being different for a purpose. And I freaking love that. Love this uh, Five of Wands. That was a really cool take. Love our King of Water. I love that we get great keywords and also these like little kind of like lyrical phrases or poems. I don't know if you call them poems, but little rhyming phrases and rhyming food for thought within the deck. And I just realized the backs are not reversible. I don't think that really matters to me. Something like this I can pretty much glaze over, but you have these two sort of dancing figures on the bottom and then a singular figure up top. So you'd be able to tell, right, if they're reversed, if you were to fan them out, but I don't care. Um, I don't typically intentionally shuffle reversals in with decks like this. Decks like this, I want to just read the cards as they come out of the deck. And I definitely would want them upside down because I'd really want to take in the imagery, the four of air, which this was all about percolating and sort of generating new ideas from that place. I mean, it's so cool. I really was excited about the septenaries and the majors too. That was a really cool experience just to go through them with you. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive with me through the Journey Tarot by Tegan Michael. Oh, I've lost it now. Tegan Michael Turner. Really cool. Um, this is the kind of deck that I think is is deserving of a big juicy meaty book to really dig into all these different perspectives and like what the artists take on all of these images is as they relate to the tarot that's something that I would really love with a deck like this because I think it's got a lot to offer there's a lot of depth and substance to this this is not just a bunch of pretty art on cards that's been associated with the tarot by any stretch of the imagination there's so much richness to these images and so much to explore and dive into then again perhaps the purpose here is to really have that journey on our own and if so that's amazing but I I'm sold I really love this I mean, I say I'm sold. I'm like, I totally bought this. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously I was sold or I wouldn't have, but um, I'm really excited about it. I think it really does something cool here. I don't know why. Oftentimes I store my decks face up, but this one I want to store face down. I don't know. I don't want to ruin the mystery or something. I don't know. But props to Tegan for an incredible deck. Anyway, I've got to stop babbling because we've been here for like a little while now. So <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, as always, an extra big thank you goes out to my Unicorn Fam channel members. Thank you so, so much for supporting what I do here. It really makes such an enormous difference. You have no idea, and I appreciate you all so, so much. For everyone watching this video, thank you. Thank you for spending your time here. That means the most. I appreciate that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the youtube -y things. It really does help the channel. And until next time, you all, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.